Hello, my name is Nathan Wright. Thank you for purchasing uh, some Redbone products. Um, this little film is not going to be in there. not going to be any hunting, shooting birds, fancy guitar music, or real nice landscapes. All it's going to be is instructions on the basic stuff that you need to know to blow your spec call. Uh, spec calling is uh, several different styles all mixed up uh, to be really high quality sound. And uh, they're just a few very simple rules that you need to follow. And if you'll get these things down, uh, your fancy stuff will almost come naturally. Um, the, the most asked question about it that, uh, that we get is uh, how do you hold a call? And uh, as far as back pressure and tone, pitch, things like that, your grip is going to be one of the most important things that you have to learn. This is very, very important on anybody's call uh, to develop a proper resonating chamber in front of the insert so that you can, so that you can get the most out of what your call can do. I start with uh, putting the call in the crotch between my thumb and my trigger finger and then rolling the, my trigger finger down along the end of the insert so that about half my trigger finger hangs over the insert. Now that's very important because that's what you're going to, that's going to be a real fine tuner for back pressure is having a little bit of that meat hanging over the end of that insert. So we, that, that grip is important. You want to catch it down close to the end. You don't want it, uh, you don't want it back in your hand. You don't want your hand touching the band, anything like that. Make sure you get it down there close to the end. Very, very important. Now your finger will come around there and touch the ball of your thumb at the base of your thumb. Okay, and, that, and that's going to be your grip. That's how you're going to hold it in there. Now these three fingers right here will play a major role in creating the void. And what you do is you just imagine that your insert is three or four inches longer and wrap those fingers around that imaginary insert without the tips touching the palm of your hand. Now when you've done that, you've created a void in there. You could slip your finger in there and pull it out and the fingers won't move. That's the one hand grip and that's the beginning of developing what you want to do with it. Now there are a lot of people that call with specs with one hand and uh, it, it was kind of tradition many years ago. In fact, two hand grips on spec calls is really not that uh, it's not that old of a deal. It's kind of a new thing. So the, the one-handed grips sound pretty good, and uh, you can blow these calls with one. They sound kind of like this with one hand. And, uh, you know, that sounds okay. You can kill geese with that, and a, and a lot of people do. We do, you know, we make an insert for folks that like to use one hand. The, uh, but the sound that we're really after is this. It's a, it's a fancier sound, a more complicated sound, and we're going to get that by bringing our left hand into play here to really start picking up the back pressure and uh, adjusting the pitch. Okay, now we've got our right hand, the, the subject is settled with our right hand. Now we got our one hand grip settled and we, and we can see that we can make a good sound with one hand. We'll just, we'll work on putting the other one on there to really dress the sound up. Now we want to always keep in mind that even when we put this other hand on here that the tips of these three fingers are not going to go against that palm. These, these three fingers are what are going to begin to develop our resonating chamber so we don't ever want to close that up. We want to keep that just like your hand is a physical part of that call and make that and make this void stay in there even when we lock up. Now we're going to take the other hand and do a James Bond karate chop then we'll make the letter C. Okay. With that one hand grip that we had a while ago, we'll take this little finger right here and kind of pooch it out like that. And that point right there is going to be the hinge for what we're going to do. We're going to take that little tip of that little finger and we're going to put it at the base of our thumb right here. That's a big, that's, that's a big deal for the technique is putting that little finger right here. And then we'll take that the bridge or the side of this left trigger finger and put it up against the, the edge of the uh, right little finger. And then continue wrapping the hands around until we get the fingers almost on the heel of that hand. And what we've done is we've created a void that you would almost, where you could almost put like a, a golf ball or something up in there. And uh, your void cannot be too big. If your call doesn't sound exactly right, it's probably because your void is not big enough. We want to create a void 
that's going to manage our pressure for us. And because we're, we're trying to develop a pressure, we want to make sure that our fingers stay together and that our hands stay together so that the pressure can't leak out because if it does, it won't develop. Okay, once we get that, once we get our grips settled, and it's something that you'll have to practice on, and you don't have to be, uh, it's not a real tense deal. You need to be loose and, uh, you know, don't get a Charlie horse in your hand about, about how things are going there, but make sure that you're not letting pressure out. And, you know, you'll use this grip for all of your calling. Now, as you do stuff, uh, as you want to change the pitch, you will start moving this left hand. You'll, you'll hear me say, open your left hand. Well, opening the left hand this much is a lot. This much is like normal. This much is a lot. This is a whole lot when you're spec calling. So it's not, it's not like this. We're not going to be doing anything like this. It's very controlled, easy going, not a lot of pressure, not blowing hard, certainly. Uh, it's just manipulating and controlling the air and that pitch but with, this, with the uh, void that you created with your hands. Now, after you get your grip down, uh, the next thing that we're going to need to talk about is presenting the air into the call. Now, there's two ways are two methods of spec calling, two styles. One of them is a scratch style, and one of them is a clear air style. Now, both styles use the same grip, and the only difference is that you're going to introduce different kinds of air into them. If you take your spec call and just blow into it, just like hold it like a cigarette, and just blow straight air like you were whistling into your call, it would sound like this. If you, if you used about that much air, and remember, it's not straining. We're just blowing enough air into it to get it to run. That's, that's, about, that's all we need. We're not going like this. It's not a strain, just enough to get it going. That's, just, that's what we would call clear air presentation. Now, the other one is saying the word wood into the call without the D. Just wool, 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 and you get this. So by adding that voice inflection, you turn this clear air style into this, which is the scratch style. And those, that's the only two air presentation styles that you really be need to use. Now, you'll be combining them, and we're going to kind of talk about them separately, but in your hunting, uh, you'll be hailing maybe with clear air and finishing with the, uh, the scratch sound. But uh, they're distinct things that you need to mix up to make your calling sound a little fancier. Okay, with our grip, now, we'll, put our, we'll get our grip back, our big two-handed grip like we were talking about, and we'll just blow some clear air, just the clear air into it, just like we were doing there just a minute ago. Okay, see so that grip has changed this sound into this sound. Very important that you get that. In fact, really don't, don't, try, don't try to do too much else with your call until you can make that sound right there. Change the open sound into this. Same air, all it is is that grip that's changing it. Um, and also the scratch end of it, when, while we were doing the we'll put our hands on it and now the call will go and that's just saying woo 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 woo, which is just a speck murmur, just like a Canada has a murmur, a snow goose, or the white geese in Momo's backyard all have a mur a murmur. That's a speck murmur, and it's a type of uh, it's a sound that you can use to finish, just like you do with any other goose. Okay, we're gonna we'll, we'll kind of work on our murmur a little bit, our scratch. Now uh, those two words are the same thing. We'll get to where we can do our scratch whenever we want to. <laughs> Experiment with moving your hand around a little bit, that left hand opening and closing it. <laughs> You'll see that the pitch will, uh, will climb as you open your resonating chamber and as, it'll, as you close it, it'll bring it back down. Now, the scratch is very important. It's going to be something that you'll use in all your calling. Geese do it. It'll tie your calling together, make everything sound uh, pretty slick and, you know, very realistic. So we want to stay with that scratch. 
and get to use it well. I know I said it a bunch of times, but the scratch is very important. All right, when we move from the scratch, we're going to move to the very, to the, then we'll talk about the most important sound you make, and that is the squeal. And the squeal is just a scratch. As you scratch, your tongue will be laying in the bottom of your mouth with your tip of your tongue locked in at the base of your bottom teeth. The squeal will start pushing air, quick, more air quickly up out of our throat. And as the air gets moving real good, we're going to drive our tongue up and forward to speed the air up even more. And then as our tongue slaps up against the front and the top of our mouth, it'll be like a door shutting. And that'll cause the call to, to squeal. And uh, we want to develop a very sharp, distinct squeal. You know, between our scratch and our squeal, we'll, is, we're going to make a cluck. And that's, that's what a cluck is, just a scratch and a squeal. But we want a very distinct sound, so we want to learn to do our, our scratch really well and our squeal really well. So it's going to sound something like this, the squeal from starting from scratch. <laughs> Now, if you do that about five million times, you'll get to where you can really be coordinated with it. But we want to really concentrate on driving that tongue, getting that air pressure going and driving that tongue so that we get a very bright squeal sound of it because the squeal is going to be part of our yodel later on. So we want to practice our cluck. Scratch, squeal, scratch, squeal, scratch, squeal. <laughs> You can see as you close that left hand up, tighten that resonating chamber up, the pitch is going to stay down. If you want to make the call go faster, a more excited type thing, you'll open that left hand up, let the pitch climb, and then set it back down. You always want us to go up and set it back down because just leaving it up is a warning call, so we don't want to do too much of that. So just let the pitch go up and then set it back down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now that squeal is an independent sound. Now we've been hooking it to the scratch, but it's an independent sound, so we want to be able to do just the squeal if we want to, and and uh, and be able to do it very bright and do it very fast. Uh, the machine gun cluck is a is a cluck that we'll do with just squeal and no scratch. Uh, the squeal by itself would be just just hit just hitting the tongue. <laughs> and if we do that quickly and in kind of a rhythm, it'll get develop a machine gun cluck, very effective hailing sound. <laughs> Mix that up with a little bit of your scratch cluck, and it'll sound like geese feeding or moving around in a field. You hear them do that. If you, a lot of times you drive up early in the morning, hear them in the field, you'll hear them doing this kind of stuff. <laughs> And that's basically what you'll be doing for your, uh, for your clucking. Those are the two types. You got the scratch cluck, you put your scratch, then a squeal, and then just a very fast squeal, a bunch of squeals hooked up together to make your machine gun cluck. Okay, once we get, our, get to where we can handle that scratch cluck, we'll, we'll move over into, into the yodel end of the deal. Um, and the easiest yodel to learn, I think, is the scratch yodel. And all it is is a scratch a bent note and then a squeal. Now we already know how to make two pieces of it because we can make a scratch and we can make a squeal. So all we need is the bent note. And the bent note is just hitting the call and letting the, letting the sound fall off by just decreasing the pressure. So we'll get our grip and just hit it. Now if you were going to call a wood duck with your spec call it would be That's all bent note. And what we'll do to call specs is just make a little short bent note. 
We'll start it with a K or a T or something like that, a nice hard consonant sound. Okay, once you kind of get a grip on that bent note, Dylan, it's really simple. All you're doing is just hitting it and letting it fall off. We'll do a scratch, a bent note, and then a squeal, and, and hook those things together in one movement. It's one breath, one sound. It's not three distinct ones. It's just three things that blur into one, and it'll sound like this, going slow. So when you when you do a bunch of scratch uh, yodel together, you'll get something like. that stuff is, is just this going fast. Now it's not too dramatic and it doesn't sound real slick to do it slow like that, but if you'll practice those three distinct sounds and then learn to blur them together with speed, you'll be doing a, uh, you'll be doing a pretty good scratch yodel real fast. Remember, that's that, like we were talking about, that squeal has to be bright. I mean, if you listen closely to the sound, you'll see that the squeal plays a, a major role in uh, making a good yodel. <laughs> and also about our, uh, uh, about our bent note. We don't want to let our bent note fall way down. It's a short thing. It's going to be, it should be of duration about like a squeal is. You don't want to get into something like where you're going. It's. You see the duration of your of the bent note. It does. You you start your bent note, and when you've gone down as far as you want, then you squeal. There's no break between the bent note and the squeal. Put a lot of emphasis on that on the squeal, and take a little emphasis off of it. A couple of different geese right there. Now before we go jump on off into the clear air stuff, let's kind of go back over our what we've done so far. We want to make sure that we're practicing and we're getting our scratch down, and to where we just put the call normally to our mouth, and that's just the sound we get. And we're just voicing the word woo woo woo. We're not woo. We're not jerking around, jumping, doing all kind of gymnastics or grunting or doing anything real, real dramatic. All we're doing is just, just like you would, almost like you would say the word woo woo woo. That's all we're putting into the call. <laughs> And practice on opening and closing our left hand to let the pitch rise and fall. <laughs> and when you master that scratch, when you can do that, then you've already learned the murmur of the goose. So, I mean, that's a finishing sound right there. Okay, when we, we get our scratch all situated, we got that straight, and we'll go to the squeal, very important component in the spec sound. We want to keep the tongue down in the mouth, just like in our, like we're saying, wool. When we get ready, we increase the air a little bit, slam the tongue forward, cut the air off, make the call squeal. We want to make sure that we got a big distinction in our scratch. We want a real definite scratch, a real definite squeal, because the contrast in the two sounds is what it makes it sound realistic. Uh, same thing with our scratch yodel. Scratch, bent note, squeal. <laughs> But 
even that scratch in all of your calling like that makes it sound like a goose. Gives you a nice, um, complete sound. Fills up the gaps. You know, you're, it, there's no quiet in that because you're filling it up with that scratch. Okay, now the the, the scratch is kind of the the close in type calling. Uh, the finishing sounds, the quieter type stuff that you'll probably be wanting to do as the geese really draw in in on you. Now, the, but the other side of the spec calling sound is clear air, and clear air is just whistling into the call. It's just the opposite of what we were doing with our voice. There's no voice involved at all. Just like when we started this, we were saying just blowing this into the call, <laughs> holding it like a cigarette and then putting our two-hand grip on it and blowing the same air into it to get this. <laughs> Moving our left hand around a little bit to change the pitch and some of the volume. All right, now, when you, if you were, somebody was standing over there, or if your dog was over there and you were ready to go, you'd call your dog, you'd go, That's how you, you know, to get someone's attention or your dog's attention, that's what you do. You just whistle this. Well, when you've done that, you just called a speck because that's what we're going to put into the call clear air wise to make the speck sound. So just, just this air with the grip, we're just going to whistle in the call. You hear it? Now, if I did a big old long, now that if we were scratch calling or scratch calling in there, you'd be hearing this. Yelling with a lot of voice, clear air is not like that. We're just gonna we're just gonna whistle into the call and get. Okay, you hear people say that they spit into their red bones, and that's how they get a good sound out of them. Now, this clear air is where they're talking about. That's where the spitting part comes in because you want to start your your whistle sound kind of with the letter maybe T or maybe P or something like that, kind of like you, like you dig a little piece of meat out between your teeth with your tongue, you get up there and go, well, that's kind of what this is. So you'll start your whistle there, you know, you'll kind of, you, you'll jump on it a little bit. Now, the, the squeal that you're doing with that, you're still driving your tongue far because you can't really squeal your call by just tapping it. You need, your, you need that tongue action in there to make your call squeal, but you'll vent note with clear air and then slam that tongue up there, trying not to hum or you know get any wool into it to get your uh, to get your clear air stuff. Now your clear air is going to be yodel, you know, and you'll be able to do fast, loud, high pitched stuff with your clear air, and it'll sound good mixed up. But uh, to hail with, you'd be using your clear air, long notes, fast, and stuff, and so it would kind of sound like. <laughs> That would be kind of like a a, um, a clear hail, and you know it's not something that you're going to get out of breath with. I'm an old man, and I can do that, and it doesn't really play me out that bad. Uh, so what you know, you can see that it's not a whole lot of air that we're putting into the call. Um, we're gonna, we'll, we'll, you'll be putting your lips into the call, uh, kind of pucker up, but you'll be puckering up like you're gonna kiss grandma and not your wife. You know, you, it's a little different kiss. So you put those stiff lips on the call, and you'll be blowing through a small crack in your lips. Not, you know, it's not a real open mouth type of deal. Cheeks nice and tight, so they don't, you know, they're not flapping in the breeze as you're airing things up. But uh, you want to you keep it tight, keep a nice air stream going, and you that way you won't waste a whole lot of air because it really doesn't take a lot of air to make the call sound. It's the velocity or the speed of the air that you're dependent on to get what you want out of it. So remember. <laughs> and 
and you want to step on that, you want to step on that squeal uh, with a T, P, or maybe, I, I, sometimes I use like the word cook. Cook, 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 cook. And you can see about how much I'm moving my left hand to get that. And uh, that's pretty exaggerated movement. You know, you want to keep your hands pretty steady and you can get a lot out open in that left hand, but you know, you don't want to go too wild with it. Now you, you can also cluck in a clear air style, which is mostly a machine gun deal because all you're going to be doing is squealing, uh, a bunch of squeals hooked up. <laughs> Now that, that can be used almost like a hail call. If you have a bird or a group that doesn't really want to respond to your yodel, uh, you can lay down on them with that really hard and just stay with them. A lot of times you'll turn a bird uh, out of, a, out of a, a group that doesn't want to respond with that machine gun cluck. <laughs> <laughs> and you throw a few clear air yodels in that, it makes it sound pretty good. <laughs> And that, that's basically all the clear air stuff that there is. Uh, it's something, uh, a technique that I use a lot. I, I like the clear air call. It's very effective, for, especially for mimicking geese. I try to save my scratch for, uh, for when they get close, and then I'll blend it some with, uh, with the clear air stuff, like this. <laughs> Um, you know, and as you're doing this, you're, there's a lot of things that you'll be changing. You'll be changing the pitch of your voice that you're using, the speed of the air, and um, also how hard you're blowing the call. Uh, you can back off a little bit on your scratch, and then you can blow a really hard one. Uh, back off on your clear air, and then really punch on it. Use those different different styles of uh, pressures to change your pitches and your volumes. Now, it's, red bones are easy blowing calls, and uh, you don't want to get you don't want to get too wound up with blowing hard because you'll blow past a lot of the good stuff. <laughs> Blowing hard is hard to accent the beginning of your clear air note, so don't blow past the good stuff in your effort to get more volume or more speed. Same thing with the same thing with your scratch. Uh, if you'll use more voice and less air, your scratch will be uh, become more dramatic and more effective. If you take a lot of the air out of it, just Um, something like that. Okay, now we got our we got us some experience with our scratch, with our squeal, with our bent note. We can do a clear air calling. Starting to get our starting to get our sounds like we want. The next part of the deal is working on a rhythm. Uh, rhythm makes your spec calling sound real. So it makes it sound good to people, to judges, and uh, it, it'll help you get what you want out to the bird. Um, and you need to do a few little exercises, and you'll get to where that you're running the call rather than the call running you. So, uh, the, my favorite one exercise for rhythm would be the Indian attack. Uh, you, everybody's heard dun 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 from the time they were a kid. And what we'll do is we're going to be doing that with our spec call. And we'll do a clucks, 
for the for the the low notes and then the uh, emphasis note, we'll do a yodel on it, and we'll just go through some of those and learn to do it faster, slower, speed up, change them out, and all that kind of stuff. And it'll sound kind of like this. <laughs> Also, you can practice on your breathing with this. If you take a deep breath, you'll see how much you can call. If you take a shallow breath, you'll see how much you can call. And, you're, and the notes will change pitch and, and intensity based on how much air you're trying to hold. So take a, just take a medium breath and just do the Indian attack. Okay, that one would be like they just got through eating and uh, they just kind of laying around and can't do much. Now, if they got a little more excited, it would be... <laughs> and then if, like, they were going to after the wagon train, it would be... <laughs> and it just sounds like that, that you'll practice over and over to kind of to kind of get yourself going again. And um, if you'll use, you can take, you can do a little Indian attack and do some calling, then go back into a little Indian, Indian attack and it'll give a base to your, uh, to your, to your style.